Hello, in this series I will be looking at how you can add minor details to your sculpts quickly and easily using texture brushes. You can find the first video in the description and there's a card in the corner now. In this video, the second video, we're looking at how you can add these textures to your brushes and the third will show you how to create your own. You can find this course and other free courses like it on gabbit.co.uk and do ask any questions in the comments below and I'll get back to you. Alternatively, you can join the Discord server and ask questions there or just chat and maybe join in some of the competitions. I'm using Blender 2.8. You can find a link to how to do this in Blender 2.79 in the description and there'll be a card in the corner again. So first of all, I'm going to set up my mesh for sculpting. I'm going to join these two areas by right clicking here and saying join area and moving my mouse downwards so I can make full use of my screen. I'm going to subdivide this cube in the middle by pressing control five. That will add a subdivision surface if I show you that in the spanner or the wrench over here, I've added a subdivision surface with five levels. So control five or four would be four levels and so on. I'll apply that and that's given me this level of detail in my sort of cubey sphere thing. Back into object mode with tab. The last thing I'm going to do is add a multi-resolution modifier. So this is a fairly detailed mesh, but it's not detailed enough in order to add the minor details from a texture brush. If I quickly go into sculpting mode, and sculpt on it, you can see it's still quite sort of pixelated in a strange way, and that's just because we've got a low amount of faces. So I'll undo that and go back to layout mode. What I'm going to do then is add a multi-resolution modifier and subdivide it around five times. Now what you will want to look for here is the face count. I have an i7 fourth generation CPU, and that will take up to about six million faces fairly comfortably. And I would say most modern good CPUs will do that. And if I subdivide this now to that sort of level, I've got four at the moment and we're on one million or one and a half and subdivide once more, bit of lag, bit of delay, we're up to six million. So now when I go across to sculpt mode, you can see I can get a nice lot of detail without any of that sort of pixelation look. So I'll undo that. It's worth noting that the multi-resolution modifier is the best way to add this sort of detail. If you have a mesh that you've used the Dyn Topo for, then you'll have to do what's called a detailed flood fill. I have a separate video about that, which I'll put in the corner now. So how do we add the textures to our brushes? Well, what I'm going to do, I'm on the basic sculpt draw brush over here, and that gives me this brush. I'm going to add a new brush with this icon here and call it texture. That way I can easily revert back to my draw brush by just clicking this icon and going back to the sculpt draw. So whenever I'm in the basic draw brush, I can go across to here and choose my texture one or my draw one. It may be that this will change in later releases of 2.8 and it might be up here. So I want to add a texture to this, therefore I go down to the texture panel and pull this out. What I'm going to do as well is just bring this out slightly and bring out a new window and I'm going to change this one to the texture tab. That way, when I add a texture here, it will appear in my texture tab and I'll be able to choose my textures over here. So I'll do that now, I'll press new. That's created a new texture called texture. And you can see here we're under brush, texture, so I know I'm on the right one. And when I open my brushes here with open and go to my brush folder and let's choose a brush and I'll choose this sort of rocky texture here and press open image you can see that this texture is now on my brush. That's great, so if I start painting now, you can see that detail coming through. But there's a couple of problems. One, it doesn't look very good, and that's kind of to do with the brush to start with. Let's look at this texture in a bit more detail. So this is not a bad brush for any particular reason, but it has very sort of minor details. So this is kind of a fine detail brush. This one, on the other hand, is a rock brush and it has much smoother details. So you have to consider what type of brush you're using and how it's going to look on your model. You'll get used to these as you go along, but do understand the more white you have and the more blur you have to it, the bigger you can make those details. These sort of minute details where you've got tiny spots of white are going to be a bit finer. That's not the only problem I have though. If I click once, it does a reasonable job, it's not great, but you'll notice if I draw, it creates quite a bobbly effect. So I'm going to undo those strokes and change some of the settings to this brush. First of all, let's start with the strength. I think it's a bit too strong at the moment, 
because this is very fine detail. So let's bring that back down just a touch and let's see what that looks like. That's probably a bit better for this sort of brush. The next is how it's appearing on my object. So let's look at the texture mapping options. At the moment it's got view plane ticked. So if I draw on the edge here, I'll make my brush a bit bigger in fact, draw on the edge here, you can see that it stretches across. So that means wherever my view plane is, that's where it's projecting outwards from. We need to change that to what's called area plane that takes the normals of the object, so where the faces are pointing, into account. So what I'm going to do, at the top, I need to make sure that under my texture area, area plane is selected there. That's just under the radius and strength and things. And down here, under the texture as well, I need area plane also. I'm not sure why we need to do it twice. There's probably some clever blender person out there who can tell me that. But now if I click, you can see there's no stretching. It's taking into account the faces of this object, which is what we want. I'll undo those strokes as well. I'm also just quickly going to turn off symmetry because I don't need it on both sides of my object. There's symmetry lock down there and I just turned off the x-axis. Okay, so it's working to a degree, but we've still got this dreadful sort of blobbiness when I pull it across. So I'll undo that and we'll try a different texture for the next one. So to add multiple textures, we just go down to the add texture option down here and that's created a new texture and you probably saw it change up here as well. So I've now created a new texture. At the moment they're both the same, but as soon as I change it here and press the open sign here and select a new one, let's select the one I was talking about, the rock brush down the bottom here, which I think was this one, and try that out. Let's make my brush a bit bigger with F. And that looks nice as long as I'm clicking just the once, but it's always pointing in the same direction. So let's undo those strokes. And I still have this problem that when I'm drawing, it doesn't look as bad as the other one, but it's still creating a very uniform stroke, which doesn't look great. I'm going to put the strength of this one up really slightly. Let's see what that looks like. And hopefully you can see from this the quality of this sort of brush, as opposed to the last one. Let's look at the last one. This is very fine detail, whereas this one is a bit nicer for a rock brush anyway. So this one has to be on a very low strength for it to work, whereas this one still keeps its shape and structure even on a high strength. It tends to be the more smoother transitions between your whites and blacks, so the sort of grey levels, and in a sense a more blurred image will do a much better job. I'll illustrate that point quickly again by adding a new texture here and changing my texture over here to one that's got very sort of crisp details. This rock for example, as opposed to the ones I'm using at the moment. I'll open that up. So this as opposed to the other one, has got very crisp details. And let's try it out. And you can see it gives sort of crisp results. So there's a much starker contrast in this one as opposed to this one. And they tend to be the better brushes for bigger details, ones with a bit more blur to them. So if I were to take this brush and blur it in something like Photoshop, I'd probably get a better image like this one. Anyway, let's undo some of these strokes. And let's go back to my good texture brushes, I'm going to call it. Right, so at the moment, it's always following the same angle. So I'll undo those two. And I've got a random option here, which is quite handy. So let's tick that. And now it's coming out random. It's stretched there because for some reason my area plane got turned off. So let's turn that back on again. And we'll undo those strokes. And random. Now when I add objects, they're adding in a random way. Now when I zoom out, my brush changes size, so I can zoom in and out and have different sizes. But what if I had an object that I wanted to stay the same size, however far out or zoomed in I was? Well, let's try a different brush again. So I've clicked on new brush down here, going over to my new brush and opening up something that needs to be the same size all the time, and that's something like a button. So I'll open that up, see what it looks like. Not looking too bad. I'll make my brush a bit smaller, but I'm having this problem that when I zoom in and out, I'm getting different size buttons. So let's undo that. There's also another issue with this button, which I'll sort out in a second. What I need to do for the radius is lock the radius up here. So there's this little lock icon that I can click on. Now when I create my button, it's always the same size, no matter where I am zoomed in or out. So I'll undo those. And let's take a closer look at this button. There's something going wrong here. One, it's not particularly high detail, but that's to do with the subdivisions I have. And for this example, I'm going to undo that 
and up the resolution once more. So I'm going to subdivide once more. This is where my computer will struggle a touch. So we've jumped up to 25 million faces and the detail is a bit better, but I'm still getting this problem at the edges. It doesn't look much like the button that's on here. Now the reason for that is, if I go back to my tools, which is the brushes, if I go down a bit lower, I'm going to hide the texture tab and go into the curve. Now when you look at the curve, you have to understand it in terms of opacity. So this is not visible at all down here and fully visible here, 100% opaque and then 0% opaque and it slowly slides up. Hence we've got this slow transition where it goes into nothing. I like to look at this as the side of a brush so you get lots of ink here or paint here and hardly any on the edges. So for things like a button, I need to change it to this curve here, which isn't really a curve, it's just a straight line. But now when I click, you can see that it comes out completely solid. So my curve is actually going right across the top here and therefore the whole of the brush is coming out. So when you have textures like this for hard surface modeling, it's best to use a brush where they go right to the edge. I'll choose one more with my new, by pressing new here and then going over to open image. And let's use Jonathan's sci-fi alpha pack, one of these for example, and click on my object to create this interesting looking shape. Because I've got my brush all solid, it's all coming out. If I change this to the default, which is over here, it's got this slow transition into 0% opacity. And if I click now, you can see it slowly drifts away. And you can change brushes quite interestingly like this so you can get some adaptations to your brushes. Okay, let's undo that. I'm going to quickly turn the subdivision down because my computer's struggling too much. If you need to turn the subdivision down, you can also delete higher, which will delete all the detail of the higher resolution, which may help my computer run a bit faster. Over 20 million faces was just a bit too much whilst recording as well. So back to my brushes. Now with these hard surface textures, you might want a nice long line of them evenly spaced out. Well, we can do that if I minimize the texture and the curve under the stroke section. So at the moment, it's under space. And if I draw in a line, that's the space between my images. So I'll undo that. And if I turn the space down to five, you can see the distance is slightly tighter. But if I turn this up to 50 and draw a line, you can start to see where I'm going with this, hopefully. I'm going to undo that. I'll turn the strength down a touch. Also, it's worth pointing out that you have pen pressure on the end here. I'm actually doing this with a mouse at the moment, so I can turn that off. But if you want different heights when you push down on your pen, then you'll need that pressed. So let's turn the spacing up to 80 and draw a line. That looks good. I'm going to bring my radius down a touch. And instead of space, I'm going to change it to line. That way, I can draw a line and get buttons coming out. I need to turn my spacing up just a touch to something like 90 and draw a line again. Because it's going around a curve, the distance between the spacing isn't quite right, but that should be fine on a flatter surface. So that can be useful for drawing a line of different objects. So under the stroke method as well, we have something called anchored. Now this is quite an interesting one when it comes to things like rocks. So I'll go back to my rock texture. And if I try now, you can see that I pull it out and it creates a rock shape and I can change the size of this rock quite nicely. So pulling it out like this, looks fantastic. And that's using the anchored method under the stroke. So I think there's quite a lot of detail there for you to be trying out. The last thing I'm going to show you is how I can save these textures. So at the moment, if I press save and then come back into this file, I'll only see the one that I've got selected, which is this one here. In order to make all of them available when I come back into my saved file, I need to click on this little icon down here, save this data block even if it has no users. So click on that, go to each of them and make sure that's selected. And go to File Save. So now if I quit this and reopen it and go back to my brush, I've got all my textures available. Okay, so that was a fairly detailed look at adding alphas. In the next episode, I'll be talking about how you can create your own. Remember, you can comment with any questions you have or get across to the Discord server and you can chat to me there. Thanks for watching and I hope this helps.